everything in life, it starts from a tiny seed. Just think about that thought for a moment there. Everything in life starts from a tiny seed. For example, the vegetables that you may eat later on today, they came from a tiny seed. The fruit that you may eat also today came from a tiny seed. If you think about it, all of us who are gathered in this room, we came from the seed of a woman and a man, tiny seeds. From a tiny seed, all is born. And in birth, there is potential. In birth, there is promise. In birth, there is hope. In birth, there is growth. There has been a seed, I tell you today, that has been sown in our world. And the sower of that seed has much hope in what he has sown. He has hope for what it can and should grow into. Now, the seed that I'm speaking of today is the same seed that Jesus spoke of in a few parables that we are going to take a look at here today. Here in the fourth chapter of Mark's gospel, we will see where Jesus spoke to a great multitude that had gathered to him by the Sea of Galilee. Jesus, he was teaching to them from the boat about the kingdom of God. You know, we, mankind, we have always had an invested interest Mm -hmm. as to why we are here. And when I say why we are here, we have an invested interest into why we were created in the first place. Mm -hmm. And, And with that comes thought of what happens after All is said and done down here. These thoughts, they have led some of us to wondering about the kingdom of God. You see, I believe that this was what led those that had gathered unto Jesus right there by the Sea of Galilee. I believe that it was those same thoughts that led them to Jesus, to listening to the word that he had to share with them. So to paint a picture of God's kingdom to the people, we'll see here in the parable of the growing seed that Jesus, he expressed there in the 26th verse that the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. Jesus, he was saying that the kingdom of God was as if a man had sown seed on the ground. We're in the fourth chapter of Mark's gospel. My thought for today is from a tiny seed. Now, after having scattered his seed, Jesus, he said that the man Mm -hmm. there in the 27th verse said that the man went to sleep. And over time, the man noticed that his seed, it began to sprout. At this moment there in the 27th verse, I imagine that Jesus, he took a moment to pause in his story to express another thought to the people Mm -hmm. where he expressed to the people that the man, he didn't fully understand how and why the seed had sprouted Mm -hmm. to the man. It simply happened. I would tell all you today that, The man was not alone in his understanding or there I say lack of understanding as to how or why the seed has sprouted. Mm -hmm. We have certainly made strides in our science to understand such things, but at the end of all of our research, our understanding of sowing seed, how and why seeds sprout, essentially it is the same as that man's. It is the same as those who lived back then. 
You see, our understanding, it boils down to the fact that seeds, they need to be placed in soil. All right. The seed, it needs to be watered. And the seed, it needs sunlight. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, after all those things, hopefully, that seed, it will take root. Hopefully, that seed, it will sprout and it will spring up. You see, every planter, every gardener, and even those who have that magical green thumb, they will all tell you the same exact thing. They will admit that after planting seeds, all one really can do is sit back and hope. All one can really do is sit back and hope, pray that that seed that they planted that it will take root under that surface that they bear that seed in, right. that it will take root and that it will grow. Yeah. That what they planted will hopefully grow up. Come on, in other words, every planter, every gardener, they do what they can up to a point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After that point has crossed, everything else is up to nature. It is up to nature whether or not that seed is going to take root. It is up to nature whether that seed is then going to spring forth. So if we view the kingdom of God as Jesus has initially described it here today, then we should understand that the kingdom of God is first off like a tiny seed. The kingdom of God, it is like a tiny seed that has been sown in a field. The seeds that have been scattered in that field, Jesus has expressed to us, they will either grow or they won't grow according to certain conditions. I don't know if you're following along with me quite yet, but we're about to take a deep dive and I hope you join me in this deep dive here. You see, there's a hope that the sower of that seed had in the parable. Mm -hmm. The hope of that sower that is in that parable is the same as one who would sow seed today. Hopefully the conditions of the field are right. They are conducive to that seed taking root, that seed growing, that seed yielding a ripened crop for harvest. You see, I say to you today that nobody plants a garden, nobody for that matter plants a flower and wishes that that flower doesn't grow up from the seed. I don't know if you heard what I just said there. Nobody plants a garden and wishes that that garden does not grow. Now here in the parable of the sower, that we see there from the third through the eighth verse, we'll see that Jesus, he speaks to this sower, but most importantly here, Jesus, he brings attention to the seed mm -hmm. that the sower has sown. Mm -hmm. Jesus, he draws our attention first to the soil there mm -hmm. that the seed was scattered in. Jesus, he, he first stated that the ground that some of the seed fell on was by the wayside, you know, that part of the field that was closest to the road. Mm -hmm. Some of the seed, Jesus, he then expressed, fell on stony ground. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, other seed fell, Jesus said, among thorns. And then lastly, Jesus, he said that some of the seed fell on good ground. Jesus, he explained that the ground of the wayside, he explained that it was not good for the seed to be able to take root. The reason why that ground was not good ground was because the birds of the air would be able to see that seed and they would swoop in and they would devour that seed. Jesus, he then expressed that the conditions of the stony ground was also, again, not conducive for the seed to be able to take root. And the reason why that ground was not good for the seed to be able to take root 
is because the seed would end up being scorched by the sun. Then there in the seventh verse again, we'll see that Jesus said that the conditions of the ground that was filled with thorns was also again, not conducive for the seed to be able to take root as the thorns, they would end up choking out the root or whatever tried to grow from the seed. Lastly, there in the eighth verse, there in the fourth chapter of Mars gospel, Jesus, see, he tells us that again, there was a part of the field that was good. It was good for growth. It wasn't close to the road there. If you notice, there were no stones. If you notice, there were no thorns there. So the seed, it, it fell on this good ground, this fertile ground, and it was easily able to take root in that good ground. It wasn't devoured. It wasn't scorched by the sun. And it wasn't choked out by no weeds. It wasn't choked out by no thorns. And so because this seed was able to take root, Jesus says that it sprang forth. Yeah, yeah. Psalm 60, Jesus says, Psalm a hundredfold. Uh-huh. It sprang forth, in other words, a great crop. A crop that could end up being harvested by the sower. All right, all right. Now, in this parable, of course, Jesus, he was speaking figuratively there. As we know, Jesus, he used parables to to use earthly illustrations for people to be able to understand a spiritual message. Now, unfortunately, as Jesus was speaking about the kingdom of God there, there were many who were gathered there who were struggling to understand Jesus's parable. They couldn't understand the, the spiritual message. So what did Jesus do? He 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 went further to explain what he was talking about because Jesus, he wanted the people to, to know about the kingdom of God. That was the whole point and purpose about this parable. It again was about the kingdom of God. So to further explain this parable, Jesus, he broke down the parable into its simplest parts here. Jesus, he explained over in the 13th chapter of Matthew's gospel and in the 37th verse that, that the one who sowed the good seed was the son of man. Uh-huh. Now, I believe today that all of us who are gathered in this room, I've talked about him enough. I believe that we know who the son of man is. Right. The son of man is Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Therefore, we should understand that Jesus was the one in the field who was sowing seed, who Jesus again had expressed was good seed. Uh-huh. Now, why was this seed good seed? What was the seed that Jesus had sown in that field? Well, let us consider what Jesus had come to make known in our world. Jesus, he was manifested in our world. Jesus, he came to our world to make known the divine truth. So the seed that that Jesus was sowing At that very moment, we should understand that it was holy, that it was righteous. It was, in other words, the word of God. Again, I want you to hear clearly today that the seed sown by Jesus was the word of God. Jesus, he sowed that word in our world to the people. It was a word of God's again, his heavenly kingdom. It was a word of God's promise of salvation. That is deliverance from sin. Jesus's word was that the world could overcome by the word of God. Do you hear me here today? 
So with that in mind, because Jesus again was sharing the word with the people, that would mean one thing. That would mean that the people were the field. The people was the ground of the field. I don't know if you're following along with me. May I also suggest to you today that the word of Christ, the word of God, the word of his heavenly kingdom, the word of salvation. May I suggest to you that it is still being made known in the world today. And since that is the case, that will mean that I and all of you, that you are of the field as well today. You are the ground in the field that the seed of God, that the seed of Christ, that the word of God is being sown into. Do you understand what I'm saying there today? So I would ask you today, has the word of God taken root in you? Again, listen to that question closely. Has the word of God taken root in you? Now, unfortunately, the word of God does not take root in the hearts of all people. Somebody may wonder, well, why is that, Pastor? Why does the word of God not take root in all people? Someone may wonder whether or not the word of God has truly taken root in them. Well, sadly, like all seeds in general, the word of God, it can't simply grow anywhere. Mm -hmm. It can't take root on any kind of surface right. in any kind of soil. Mm -hmm. You see, the truth of the matter is that not all hearts are conducive for the word of God to take root in it. Mm -hmm. yeah, I want you to hear that again clearly here. Not all hearts are right for the word of God to take root and therefore then grow in it. Not all souls are conducive for the word of God to take root and grow in it. Now, if I were to speak plainly to you today, I would say to you today again that if the condition of your heart, your soul, if it is not conducive for growth, then the holy and the righteous seed, it will not take root within you. You see, there are many people today who haven't grown up in their soul. And the reason why they haven't grown up in their soul is because, again, their soul ain't ready to grow. There are many people, I want you to hear this today, there are many people who haven't grew up because they aren't ready to grow up. No matter how much you try to force somebody to grow up, if they ain't ready to grow up, they ain't gonna grow up. It's just as simple as that. You see, there are many people who are dead on the inside because their heart could not receive the word of God. The tiny root, the tiny seed could not take root in them. Now, Jesus, he, he explained this for us when he stated there in the 15th verse that some folks are like the wayside. They are not conducive for the word of God because Satan is in their presence. Right. Imagine that Satan is sitting on their shoulder. And when the word of God is being sown, uh -huh. Jesus, he said there in the 15th verse that Satan, he's just there to immediately catch it like a goalie in soccer and hockey. Right. The seed is sown and Satan is there to just smack it away. Many people are like the wayside today. Those who are like the wayside, they have no traces of the word of God mm -hmm. in their heart because Satan has just backsmacked it away. Right. 
the hearts of those that are like stony ground. We see Jesus, he said there in the 16th verse that they too, again, they are not conducive for the word of God to take root in them. And the reason why is because those who hear the word, they immediately receive it with gladness if they are stony ground. But imagine taking a, a, a seed and, and tossing it on stony surface. The seed is just going to bounce off of it. And Jesus, he said that when the spiritual conditions get rough for them, who are like stony ground, when they start going through trials and through tribulation, and Jesus, he said that they stumble at the first sign. And the reason why they stumble at the first sign is because the roots of that seed could not get established on the earth, in the soil, because of the stones. So the roots, if they were there, they were too thin. And what sprang up was immediately scorched. In other words... It was immediately destroyed mm -hmm. because the roots were too thin. The seed was not well rooted. All right. All right. The hearts of those that are like a thorny surface, Jesus, he again touched on there in the 18th and 19th verse, mm -hmm. where he said that those hearts, they again, they are not conducive for the seed that he has sown about the kingdom of God said that their hearts aren't conducive for it. Mm -hmm. And the reason why their hearts aren't conducive for it is because they are too attached to this world. Come on. Their care, Jesus said there in those verses, their care is not for heaven. Mm -hmm. It is not for the word of God. Their care is for the world. They are in love with this world who we said in our Sunday school lesson is nothing but a world of sin. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. In their hearts being this way, mm -hmm. when the word of God has been sown, the, the word of God, that tiny seed, mm -hmm. it ends up being choked out. In the word of God, it is killed with them, within them, because they are, again, in love with the world. And the world puts a squeeze on it. The world strangles the word of God in their heart. In the hope of Christ, again, as the sower of that tiny seed that is the word of God, his hope is that his word takes root in your heart. His hope is that his word takes root in your soul today. We know this because in the book of Isaiah, the Lord, he said in the 55th chapter of Isaiah and the 11th verse, he said, so shall my word be that go from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. It shall not return to me empty. The Lord said that it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. God, I want you to understand he did not send his only begotten son to sow seed and for that seed not to take root and to spring up. All right. All right. I hope you hear me here today. God, he did not send his only begotten son to sow seed of his kingdom for it not to grow as he desires. Again, I say to you today that no planter plants a plant. No planter sows seed and desires for that seed not to grow. You, you, you place a, a seed in some soil. Yeah. And you watch that, that planter look at it every day to see if something will grow up. My brother is proof of that. I'm proof of that when it comes to grass. I don't throw fertilizer out into my yard and, 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 and wish for my yard not to grow up. Not for it to, to not be green. 
not for it to not flourish. I want my grass to look good. I want it to look better than all yards. I want it to be green. I want it to be lush. I want people to be jealous of my yard. And I believe every gardener is the same way. The Lord sent his only begotten son. So that seed that the son sowed would grow up. So that it will flourish. So that it will be beautiful. To all who will be able to behold it. Mm -hmm. Jesus, again, I say to you today, he has sown a holy and a righteous seed that will spring forth in the heart that is right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So understand this. If the seed does not take root in us. It is not because the sower, it is not because Jesus sowed the seed the wrong way. Jesus knows how to sow seed. Jesus knows how to to plant a garden, if you will. If the seed does not take root in us, it is because something is wrong in us. I don't know if you hear me here today. It ain't that it was something wrong with Jesus. It's that it's something was wrong with us. If you have not received the word of God today, it's not because God did something wrong. You better check your heart. Your heart is either like the wayside, like a stony surface, or like a surface filled with thorns. And see, nothing holy and righteous can take root and grow from you if the conditions are not right in your heart. Nothing holy and righteous will spring forth from you if you're if you're like the wayside, if you like the stony surface or if you like a thorny surface. However, I tell you today that you better believe that the word of God in good and in fertile ground, in a good heart, I tell you today that it will take root and that it will grow up. If you want the word of God to take root in you, you better become a surface that is good and fertile for growth. And so I ask you today, are you that good in that fertile ground? For the word of God to take root in you. Are you that good and that fertile ground for that tiny seed sown by Jesus to take root within you? My hope today is that all of us is ground that is good and fertile for the word of God for the word to take root within us and for the word to then spring forth that which is holy and that which is righteous. With the word of God well rooted in me, I tell you all today, again, I know how good it is that the word of God is is firmly and well rooted in me. Because I know what all I have gone through, I know all that I have overcome because the tiny seed sown by Jesus has taken root within me. See, had the word not been well rooted in me, I know that, again, the world would have had his way with me. The sun, in other words, would have had his way with me. The birds of the air would have had their way with me. In other words, the devil would have had his way with me had the word of God not taken root in me. So again, I would ask you today, do you desire to be that good and that fertile ground so that the word of God can take root in you? Do you desire for something holy and righteous to grow in and from you? If so, then I say to you today that we must do these things. We must let go of our lust and our love for this world so that the world does not choke the word of God out of us. Again, I say to you today that if you desire to be good and fertile ground for the word of God, you must let go of your love for this world so that the world does not kill the word of God in you. 
Secondly, we must turn away from Satan. Because the devil, he desires to sit on your shoulder. And the reason why he desires to sit on your shoulder is because the devil wants to smack the word of God away from you. He doesn't want you to receive the word. Turn away from the devil if you desire to be that good and that fertile ground for the tiny seed to take root in you. Lastly, as my key verse says here today, we again, we must be attentive to the word. We must be attentive. We must be receptive to the word of God so that the word of God can take root within us, within our hearts, within our soul today. So with all of that said, what does this tiny root, this seed, what does it, what does it sprout into? What does it grow into? From, from my key verse and when we are attentive, when we receive the, the word of God, when it takes root in us, that tiny seed, Jesus, he said that it sprouts up and that it yields a crop, a beautiful crop that Jesus said bears fruit, bears fruit for harvesting. From just that tiny seed of God's word, something wonderful can be born into this world of sin, this world of wickedness. Now, to me, the most remarkable thing about seeds is is when they actually fulfill their promise. When you can actually see that seed growing up, it brings so much happiness and, and it brings so much joy. It is a beautiful sight to see. It is a beautiful thing I say to you today when the word of God takes root in your heart. It is a beautiful thing when the word of God takes root in you and you begin to fulfill God's promise of you. God did not create you to be a sinful creature. God created you to be holy and righteous. What makes us holy and righteous is that tiny seed, the word of God. And when it takes root in you and when it begins to grow again, I tell you today that that is a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing for God to see. As he spoke from the boat and Jesus, he shared a parable again about the kingdom of God and We'll see there in the 31st verse that in Jesus, he likened the kingdom of God to a mustard seed. Which Jesus, he, he noted, was smaller than all the seeds of the earth. Over in Matthew's gospel in the 13th chapter in the 32nd verse, Matthew records Jesus saying that the mustard seed is the least of all the seeds. When we think about the kingdom of God, we picture his kingdom being so massive that it can't be defined. It is not finite. It is infinite. It is eternal. Yet the divine message of the heavenly kingdom, the eternal kingdom of God, we again have seen that it is likened to a tiny seed. I suppose that this is why the kingdom of God, this is why it is missed by so many people in our world today. Because the message it is so tiny. It is like a, again, a, a tiny seed. It is, it is not like silver and gold, you know, silver and gold. It, it always catches people's eyes. You know, people are, are drawn in by, by silver and gold, silver and gold. It, it wins the hearts of, of people. People love silver and gold. Yet, you know, I feel I must ask today, what can grow from silver and gold? Somebody will smartly say, oh, my bank account can grow, preacher. My bank account, it can grow from, from, from silver and gold. I want that silver and gold. I suppose again, hey, that's true. <laughs> silver and gold, it, it could it make your bank account grow. However, I must ask, what can silver and gold do to make you holy? 
What can silver and gold do to make you righteous? Can silver and gold deliver you from sin? In other words, can silver and gold bring forth salvation for you? Can silver and gold deliver you to the kingdom of God? I'm hearing some loud no's. And James, he wrote that those who become friends with the world, they become an enemy of God. And when you are an enemy of God, I tell you what, you find yourself cast away from his presence for all of eternity. In his letter to Timothy, Paul wrote that Timothy should command those who are rich in this present age not to trust in uncertain riches, but to be rich in good works, to store up for themselves a good foundation so that they may lay hold on eternal life. I tell you, a good foundation will be found in that tiny seed sown by Christ. From just the tiny seed has come the future a guaranteed promise of salvation and eternal life. Though Jesus, though he likened the kingdom of God to the mustard seed, I want you to understand today that we don't grow into no mustard plant. You see, we, we are more value than a mustard plant. You see, in general, the mustard seed grows into a shrub that, is, that ain't of much use. Is leaves can be eaten, but that's about it. The mustard seed itself has more value, but its value is found when it is grinded up and mixed in with, with water and vinegar and, and other kind of liquids to, to make the condiments that we eat on our hot dogs and, and on our hamburgers. So even the mustard seed itself doesn't have much value. But again, I tell you today, that the word of God, though it is a tiny seed, it has great value. You know, in the parable of the mustard seed, Jesus, he spoke about how that tiny seed there in the 31st and in the 32nd verse. How that mustard seed can actually spring forth and become a tree that that birds are able to nest in. And that sounds rather remarkable. It actually, it sounds good. But again, I want you to notice there about that tree, that that tree, Jesus doesn't mention about it having anything to sustain that bird. There is no fruit on that tree. In order for that bird to be sustained, they would have to go and find another tree that bears fruit. The seed that is sown by Jesus Again, God said that it ain't going to come up empty. It's not going to come back, the Lord said, void. That, that seed that, that is sown by Jesus, it is to bear fruit. Fruit again that is holy. Fruit again that is righteous. Understand, the seed planted in you, it is going to grow. It is going to grow into not a shrub. It is, yes, going to grow into a tree. It is going to grow into a tree of God. And hear this. That seed, it is going to grow into a tree that bears fruit. If you are good and fertile ground for that seed, your ground becomes a tree of God. And again, I say to you today that a tree of God, it bears fruit. Mm -hmm. So I ask you today, do you desire to not only receive that seed and for that seed to take root in you, but do you desire to be a tree of God? No, the tiny seed, it may not be silver or gold, but again, I say to you today that the word of God, it has far greater value than silver or gold because the word of God, it is able to give life, but not only is it able to give life, it is able to sustain life as well. Life unto eternity. You see, Jesus, he shared this message with those that desire to know about the kingdom of God. It spoke to them. And I say to you that it should speak to all of us today as well. As well. 
the world it struggles to to find value in the word of God, which is why I can never take root within them. But if you find value in the word of God, it will take root in you. See, to those who are of faith, whether it is little or strong, I say to you today that Jesus is calling on all of us to properly value the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, it should come first in our life. If you desire to become a well-planted tree of God, I tell you today, get your heart right. Remove the thorns from your surface. Remove all the stones. Make sure that you are good and fertile soil for that seed. You see, the Lord, he has already sown that seed in you. And now all you must do is get right in your heart. And when you get right, that seed, it will take root in you. And again, from a tiny seed, there is a future and there is a hope in you. There will be much beauty, but also there will be much practicality as well. God has sown a seed in you so that you can grow, become a tree that sustains all of those that are around you as well. It'll be good for you, but not just you. It'll be good for all of those that are around you as well. Again, I repeat to you this week, just as we have seen Jesus say recently, man cannot live by bread alone. Man can't survive off the riches of this world. We must need every word that proceeds from the mouth of God and every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We must receive that seed. It must be buried. It must be sown into our soul so that we can live by it, so that we can continue to make it as we go along the way, and so that we can grow into a tree of the Lord for all of those that are around us, be able to bear fruit for them as well, so that they can find life, so that they can be sustained as well, so that they too can make it. All of this, all of this, it comes from just a tiny seed. Amen. 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 Amen.